Welcome back to the channel everybody. So back on the stand today is the Chevy 292. Uh, been a little while since I've done a video with it. Um, I've had it back from the machine shop for a little while. So now I'm going to start to do a little bit of the prep work before I assemble it. So if you haven't seen the previous videos, check them out. Um, there's one of me tearing down this engine. Uh, you know, been sitting in a truck for 30 or 40 years, something like that. I've got one trying to figure out this uh, uh, SPI turbo intake and the Aussie speed intake. Still working on those. Um, still working on trying to figure out clearance for the turbo where everything's going to go on that. I still have to rebuild the head. But I've got everything for the short block uh, pretty much ready. Um, there's a lot of prep work I'm going to do before I put it on the stand. So a lot of the prep work I'm going to do is, is knock down a lot of the sharp edges and, uh, try to keep, uh, any cracks from happening, uh, deal with some of the, um, slag or whatever you want to call it, the casting flash. And I'm going to do all the backside before I put it on the stand. So, see, we've got some type of, I don't know what that is, but sharp little slag, possibly damaged from the machine shop. And uh, so I'm going to do everything on the backside, put it on the engine stand, and that way, just in case I want to, I could vat it with the engine stand on. And, and then when I take it out of the vat, or the, the engine bracket on, I could put it on the stand and wash everything and be able to rotate it and just make it nice and easy to clean. So I told the machine shop to not vat it and leave all the honing oil on it. That'll keep it from rusting or anything while um, I was waiting for an opportunity to get to it. So let me get to it. I'll uh, start dressing the block up. All right, we got it on the stand. I got all the edges on the back broke, bolt holes tapped, uh, cam plug cleaned out. I got the edges on this knocked down about as much as much as necessary. Um, all the ribs on the inside broke down, all that broke down. So I'm gonna go around the block and chamfer all the sharp edges. Uh, I know that's like a controversial thing to do, but honestly, I don't think it hurts. I went to a college class one time called failure prevention or failure analysis is what it was called. And they did talk about how a lot of cracks start on sharp edges and castings and stuff like that. Um, anyways, I know a lot of people do it. I'm going to do it on this guy. So I got to take some of the plugs out that didn't get taken out originally um, I want to go through and check all the oil holes, chamfer anything that I can, clean up oil passages and drain passages into the blocks. I'm going to hone out the, uh, lifter bores. So those would be the drain passages there. Those will get cleaned up. I'm going to check all the machinists work. Um, and so I had this thing cut, uh, caps cut. ARP studs put in, they line board it, and then I had it uh, bored and deck plated and honed, and then zero decked. I have to check all that. I got to clean up all the gasket surfaces. Um, so there's the oil feed hole there. I'm going to chamfer that, clean that up. And then this thing is getting roller uh, roller lifters. So I've got to cut these bosses down, um, do a little work on those guys, and clean up all the sharp edges around the push rod uh, holes. Maybe try to clean a little bit more out of these cylinders back here. Um, flatten the gasket surface on that guy. I use a, uh, this is a brand new one, I was using an older one. But I use a block sander, so I'll get some sandpaper for that and just run it across the surface of this guy. Um, 
check their bore clearance, see how they did on the bore clearance on the pistons. What else is there to do on this block? Eventually clean it and vat it and uh, get ready for assembly. I'll tap all the holes out with bottom taps. Make sure that they tap the head bolt holes. And uh, let me spin this guy around real quick. So I can't remember how much they took off. They pretty much went with the Ross Pistons suggestion, which was like 15 to 18 thousandths. They didn't put the pistons in. I couldn't get them to put the crank in, check the deck height. They had a uh, block master, which bores it and then decks it all in one process. So surprisingly, there's still a little bit of corrosion left over, but nothing I'm too worried about. Um, other than that, it's actually a pretty clean block. There's not much casting flash or anything around here. Uh, there's not much to worry about. So just clean it up a little bit and rock and roll with it. So I took a wire wheel to the front cylinder and I could get a little ways. Obviously there's not a lot I'm gonna be able to do with the inside, but I'll do what I can. I could come in here, I can't do it with the, but I could pick some of this out with a screwdriver. You can see there's already a pile back here. So I'll just kind of poke some of that out with the screwdriver and then see what comes out during the vat process get it as good as I can. I'm not super worried about it, but so you can see the the build up right there on the back side. So I'll scrape that out with the screwdriver real quick. You can see that the pressure holes, not sure if I can get a good view of that, but they've got plenty of gunk in them. So keep in mind that this block has been vatted, cleaned, and been soaked in uh, honing oil. Uh, it's been rattled around and banged around a lot and it still has a lot of this stuff Probably could have stand to be dip vatted, but since the machine works already done. I'll just work at it I'm gonna put it back in the spray cabinet Once I'm done with all this, but I'll run probably a little hone or a wire brush through these holes and then once once I uh, The the thread bolt the head bolt holes have been tapped so not too worried about them, but uh, once it's all vatted and everything, I'll re-inspect it and make sure there's nothing weird. But a little bit of scraping, most of that stuff comes right out. You can see on the ground how much I'm getting out. So won't cause too much effect, except it might clog little passages in the radiator or the heater core. So that's my main goal here. See how some of this goes. All right, I got all my edges chamfered inside and out. Um, got all the bolt holes tapped. I got my other oil galley plug wherever it was at. I got that one. I think there's one more that I took out. Um, yeah, got that oil galley plug out. Everything's stripped down pretty much. So just one more issue. Let me grab a flashlight here. Probably should have messed with this before I sent it off the machine shop, but they obviously have some Something weird going on with the starter bolts here So Can't quite see that one looks normal They've got helicoils in these ones, but they've also Looks like they've got a thread or, or something down in this one. It looks like they've got two different types of thread repairs so I'm gonna have to repair those and hopefully don't screw up the block in the process but we'll figure that out so other than that everything else only took me about 30 30 minutes or something to kind of knock all the sharp edges off everything tap all the bolt holes inspect everything get as much junk out of the cooling passages as I can and uh, still a little bit more to do. Um, I gotta decide what I wanna do with, uh, oh, that's a dowel pin. 
with some of the oil drain back holes and stuff like that. And, um, and then I got to get these bosses machined down. And then I think it's ready for the vat. So I found a good example of what I'm after. Let's see, you see that chunk of casting flash down in there? So I already got the bottom side of it. And I'll just lightly get that side off. The rest of them are pretty clean. I might work at that one a little bit, but those are fine. See, there's a little ridge down in there, but there's a big chunk of casting flash hanging right off the edge of that. So I'm gonna clean that guy up and you can, can't really see it in this, but it's quite a bit on the bottom side as well. So there's the after. Got all that flash out of there. Probably could work on that corner a little bit, but really don't need to. So, got a little bit out there and took quite a bit out there. So, see how that goes. Probably about all I'm gonna do for removing any of the casting flash and uh, move on to the next thing. And chamfering these oil holes, the drain back holes. Tried to open them up a little bit. Promote oil drainage a little bit, hopefully. Now on to running these things down. Not sure how I want to do this because I don't want to put my brand new lifters in here with all this shit in here. So, yeah, have to figure something out. But maybe I'll just clean it out with brake clean real quick and go from there. Okay, getting set up to machine down the bolt bosses to fit the lifters in. So most of you may be familiar with this, but this is a link bar roller lifter, which these engines do not come with. Um, not a very common part. So to put these guys in, they hit that bolt boss a little bit, get some cockeyed. So that's not allowing it to go in. And then sometimes they'll hit the base of the block right here a little bit. So, uh, 12bolt.com sells a, I guess a countersink tool or something that's meant for this. But I have this tool, which is meant for the lathe and the mill. Uh, but this has always been a pain in the ass because it has a bunch of different size of uh, ways to run it, whatever you want to call it, a bunch of different size chucks. So this one, which I'm missing. So these, these are all one size of shank that, that's the centering bit for the, for the inside of these. So this is the largest bit on this size, or on this side. And then you put your centering bit in here. That's probably about as close as it gets. You lock that, lock that down. And that'll machine down the face of that bolt boss. The problem is this one's a little bit too small. Uh, the face of this one. So we go up to the next size here. Which I think this is it. And this is a lot closer. This is a three quarter. Not sure what 12 bolt sells. I can't remember. It was only like 75 bucks, but I had this kit, so it was a shame not to use it. And then the next part is the smallest bit on this side is, is this tool. So the shank, which they did not provide, is the right size, but they don't have any smaller of a pilot than that. So, I went and got a uh, quarter inch bolt, which seems to fit good enough just for milling these down. I cut the head off of it, and this will allow me to uh, center it and hopefully mill that down. The next problem, I don't have any drill or any way to run these outside of the mill or the lathe. So I've got a big air drill, which I can kind of capture it in there. 
So I'm going to try that and see how that goes. Um, I got to cut this bolt down a little bit more, but we're going to try running it just like that and see how it goes. Let me try the first one. I'll get back with you. Okay, so got it milled down. We countersunk it with a uh, step drill bit to kind of take the burr off the center there because that's all that I had. So now our lifters slide right in. No issues, they don't hit the block. So we're not real worried about anything as long as they get all the way down and move freely afterwards. That's all we're worried about. And then the cool part is, so I'm not even actually, uh, this isn't even connected to the drill. I'm just setting it in there and turning it. It's not the best way to do it, but I can't attach this to my drill. But now I can take this and unscrew the set screw and set the depth that I want to drill to. And that way the pilot will bottom out uh, on this one. And I could adjust the pilot if I need to to go a little bit deeper. So uh, five more to do and uh, should be good. All right, got all six of them machined down. There was only one that I had to clearance the block a little bit. These lifter bores are tilted towards the block just slightly. So, let's see if I can get this in. Come on. It fits now, like I said, as long as it goes down to the bottom. So sometimes you gotta clearance them to get them in. So it just barely fits. But like I said, it doesn't matter once. As long as you get them in, it's good. That'll fly. And then I went and chamfered the edges a little bit, kind of knocked down the sharp edge. Um, so once I put the engine together, I get the cam in, I get the lifters in, uh, I'll put studs in these space these out with washers, figure all that out, and then uh, seal everything up and the covers will will go on. I'll lock the lock tight the studs in here and just put nuts on the outside. So next process, probably call it uh, good for this video. The next process before I bolt the, before I start putting the short block together, I want to bolt on the cylinder head, so I'll clean up, take it all apart, uh, clean it all up, and see how the cylinder lines up. So with all of this, so I don't want any sharp edges inside the combustion chamber, so I'm doing, well, this engine could be close to 10 to 1 compression, and it's turbocharged. So if this sharp edge, which I'm assuming it is, is inside the combustion chamber, I wanna lay this cylinder or the chamber back and grind it all out. But I wanna bolt the head on and mark all of that um, and figure out how the piston's gonna sit in here, what my quench area looks like, and pretty much start uh, working on the chambers. Well, at least line it up with the cylinder to like I said, come in here, I'll either scribe it or spray some dye on it, and that'll let me know how far I need to lay these chambers back. So that'll be on the next video. Um, and still, yeah, I've got a video trying to work out this intake and exhaust. Still got some work to do on that. Um, and then... Yeah, I also need to measure everything out still, make sure that the machine shop did a good job, and clean this up and get it ready, ready to assemble. And I'll need to file, check the piston clearance, file the rings, and that's pretty much it for prep work, so. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like and subscribe if you can. Uh, got a few other engines that I'm building. Uh, this one, there's actually going to be one that's completely assembled before this one. And then uh, I'll get to this one in probably the next few weeks. So, yeah, follow along. We'll see you next time.